Fade out one. Fade in three. Pizza Flicks Television Division presents Suspense. times do I have to tell you not to write on the walls? Well, the other guy ahead of me was... Hello? Uh, uh, uh hello, hello. Is, is Mr. Sherman there? Oh, busy, huh? You know, that guy's in a rut. Well, don't get mad at me, honey. I'm just an actor looking for work. Yeah. Sure, sure. I'll bring in pictures. Goodbye. <laughs> The guy's wife just took an overdose of sleeping pills on account of some big movie agent. So what? So what? Well, he wants them knocked off. Look, I'm not getting mixed up and bumping off any big shot movie agent. What are you scared of? This guy's a big criminal lawyer. He'll come in for us. Let's get out of here. This joint gives me the creeps. It's up too high. Well, what's the matter with you? You talk like you're on top of the Empire State instead of the... Sixth floor of some crummy apartment house in Hollywood. What's the name of this guy we're going to see? I told you ten times. Nelson. Frank Nelson. <laughs> Nothing today. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sherman. Just leave your name and address. We'll call you. Paula, come along, will you? Uh, Mr. Sherman. Yes? Mr. Robinson's been trying to get you. I'll have to talk to him later. Okay. Paula, no more calls today. I don't care who they're from. You understand? Yes, Mr. Sherman. That's a good girl. No more calls to Mr. Sherman today, Teddy. None at all. Hey, Miss Damon, I hear there's a good part from you and Mr. Claude's in next. All right, Elbert, I'll Mr. check. Mr. Claude, you like what I did for him in the past. Come back, Teddy. Come back. I'm sure you did. Poor Elmer. No, he's at the studio. Oh, wait a minute. Did you say Nelson? Well, just a minute. Say, Paula, you better take this. Hello. This is Mr. Sherman's secretary speaking. Yes. Yes, I know. Well, if you hold on just a moment, I'll try to get through to him. Oh, Miss Damon. I'm sorry, nothing today. Mr. Sherman. Yes? Helen Nelson's husband's on the telephone. Oh, no. I think you'd better take it. Well, maybe you're right, Paul. Is he on one or two? One. Sit down, please. Sherman speaking. Yes. Uh, I just read it in the paper today. I'd like to express my deepest sympathy. No, I can't think of any reason. You see, uh, Miss Nelson and I were just very casual acquaintances. What's that? You say you found something in her effects you want to return to me. Well, I can't imagine what it would be. No, I can't see you today. I, I'll try and make it tomorrow. Yes. It's a great loss. Paula, why don't you take these out and burn them? Do this yourself, you understand? I understand. What could he want to return to me? Paula, do you remember that golden key you had made up for me? The one to your apartment? Never mind where it was for. Did you, uh... Have you seen it since... The... Not since you had me send it to Helen Nelson with two dozen roses. That's it, all right. You've never met Mr. Nelson, have you? No, why? Well, I was just thinking. Big criminal lawyer. He might make things difficult. I'll handle him, all right. Oh, by the way, you better send some flowers, Paula. Nothing else just ostentatious, of course. Uh, I, I wouldn't understand. want people to get the wrong idea. You seem to understand everything. That's my job, isn't it? Yes, I'm sorry. 
I have to make up a corsage, too. I'm taking Miss Burton to the Mambo tonight. I hope she's not wearing the emeralds. Why not? It was only a week ago that I had a frantic call from the West Hollywood Police. They were allegedly stolen. I wish the police would mind their own business. You made it their business, didn't you? When you phoned in that publicity gag about Miss Bergstrom's home being robbed. They're just trying to put the bee on me for a case of scotch. Shall I send them the scotch? Send them nothing. I'll order the flower. Hi. Me again. Well, you don't have to look so unhappy about it. It's not you. Uh, Mr. Sherman's busy. Yeah, yeah. He's always busy. Uh, you know, I'm beginning to think there's no such person. You know, I shouldn't say this, but why don't you try another agent? Give me Mr. Robson the phone right away, will you please? Oh. Mr. Sherman? Nothing today, Miss, son. I'm Miss, sorry. Miss. Try Maynard Morris. Is Hollywood really like this? Look, I got a chance, haven't I? You can tell me the truth. No, you haven't a chance. Oh, unless you happen to run into some dumb secretary who can't mind her own business. I might know of a job for you. Hey, do you really mean that? Well, there might be one in the new Hal Wallace picture. He likes to discover new faces and you don't look like an actor. Uh, well, how am I supposed to take well, that? I wasn't talking about your ability. I'll speak to Mr. Sherman and you can call back if you like. Nothing I like better, that is, except to take you to dinner afterward. Well, maybe. I pick up a six. Okay. Oh, sorry, Usually, and say, Paula, if that's an actor, you better eat first. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, Mr. Sherman. Oh, right away, Mr. Sherman. Paula, boss wants you. We'll have to see Mr. Sherman. Uh, just a minute. Uh, Mr. Sherman. I've never done this before, but would you please speak to that young actor that was out there just now, Ralph Farley? An actor? A very good one, according to his New York write-up. There are thousands of good actors. Oh, is he working? Not yet, but I was thinking he might be right for the part of the young scientist in the Hal Wallace picture. Paul, I think you've got something there. Yes, why didn't I say I'll send Jimmy Decker in for that part? He's a big ham. A thousand a week isn't cheap even but for him. Paul, why not... should I send in a hundred dollar a week boy when I can get a grand for Decker? Answer me that. I see. Oh, you think I'm a heel, don't you? That's not a fair question, Mr. Sherman. I work here. That's right, you do. Would you mind handing me my hat, please? Thank you. Oh, we'd like to see Mr. Sherman. I'm sorry. Uh, he's busy. May I have your name? What name? Please? You can't go in there. He's busy. Don't let me go. Take it he's easy, gone. baby. Come in here a minute. Now, where is he? I don't know, unless he went out the back way. He often does when he doesn't want to see anyone. Not too so bad, baby. Yeah, we'll wait for him. I'm sure he will not be back today. Oh, in that case, we better look somewhere else for him. Let's try the back door. Hurry up, call from the boss to meet him at the Mambo. She won't be back till 6.30. Oh, well, that's just... Well, uh, why don't you just um, sit down and read the paper? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Well, good evening, sir. Good evening. Is Mr. Sherman here? Yes, sir. He's dining with Miss Bergstrom. 
Uh, well, uh, is the secretary still here? I'll find out. Who shall I sit? Farley, Ralph Farley. Very well, sir. Good evening. Good evening. We haven't seen you in quite some well, time. Well, but he's done a little business, sir. Oh. Tell me, uh, has Mr. Sherman been in this evening? Oh, yes, he's inside with Miss Bergstrom. Oh. Thinking of giving him a job, asking for a job? Well, I don't know. I've never tried acting before. I think maybe I might have a chance. It's just as well as some I've seen. <laughs> well, we'll find out. We'll ask Mr. Sherman when we see him. I'm sorry, Mr. Farley. Mr. Sherman's secretary is out. Sir. Don't let those two men get in to see Sherman. Why not? I overheard them this afternoon. I think they plan on killing him. What's he saying? I don't know. You better get a cop, Poncho. I think they want to kill Sherman. Is he drunk? Listen, what? I overheard you on a place on the Hoya Drive this afternoon. You were talking on the phone. Someone said he had a job for you. That's to kill Sherman, isn't it? Yes, sir, you're causing a disturbance. Poncho! It's a public. There's no publicity gang. Poncho, get a cop. I'm telling you, they're going to kill shot, Sherman. Thing. Will you please leave? All right. Drive my hat, please. Yeah, but what do we do with the body? There isn't going to be any body, Sam. Well, how do you figure that? On account of we use this new chemical Tyler has discovered. A fact we established in the first reel. That's terrific, Milton. Simply <laughs> terrific. Let's see. Good evening, Mr. Williams. Terribly sorry, gentlemen. Those things happen. We'll have a table for you in just a moment. All right, we'll, we'll come back later. Some other time. idea of calling us a couple of killers. And in public, too. Well, maybe I made a mistake. Yeah, I'll say you did, and a big one. Well, it's, it's just that I overheard a conversation. Yeah. People who listen at keyholes sometimes hear too much for their own good. No, oh, maybe it was a couple of movie actors rehearsing the scene, huh? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe that yeah. was it. You know, this is for calling us names. <laughs> He won't be there yet. Well, wait for it. I got the key nuts and did it. Yeah. Better let him. You imagine a gold key? Hello? Oh, Plover, thank goodness it's you. Hey, Plover, where are you? On your way up to Sherman's. Uh, oh, listen, listen, Paula, now. Paula? Paula? Paula! I'd like to tell you about a big celebration that took place recently right here in New York. Yes, the whole city came off to welcome Pierre the Pilot, the famous foreign flyer who was here for a short visit. Well, sir, up Broadway they came with Pierre perched up in the back of a big slinky limousine. The crowd was shouting and, oh, well, look what happened. The car started acting up. Yes, worn out spark plugs was the trouble and it gave Pierre the ride of his life. <laughs> well, of course, friends, that just is a story, but it does emphasize something that some of us often overlook. And that is that spark plugs are vitally important to the smooth and efficient operation of your car. You see, if your spark plugs aren't functioning properly, you may find that your car is sluggish, that it lacks power, wastes gas, that it's slow on the pickup, and that it isn't up to par on the hills. So it's important that you have your spark plugs checked regularly. Right now, for example, when you have your car serviced for cold weather driving and if replacements are necessary, be sure and insist on ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, the spark plugs that are world-famous for quality and dependability. You see, Autolite spark plugs are ignition-engineered by the same Autolite specialists who designed the coil, the battery, the distributor, the generator, and all the other important parts of the complete ignition system used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of America's finest cars and trucks. Yes, ignition engineered. Now, that's important to you because it means that Autolite ignition engineers design the spark plugs to work as a perfect team with the rest of your car's ignition system. And 
It also means that Autolite spark plugs have passed exhaustive laboratory and field tests to win selection as original factory equipment on many millions of America's finest cars and trucks. So remember that the spark plugs are the very heart of your car's ignition system. And when they're functioning properly, you'll enjoy smoother performance, quick starts, and gas savings. So have your plugs checked regularly, and be sure and replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered standard or resistor-type Autolite spark plugs. Yes, friends, take a tip from me and see your Autolite spark plug dealer soon. Remember, you can't buy better spark plugs for your car than Autolite. Well, now, getting back to our celebrated visitor, Pierre the pilot... The Autolite Ignition Engineered Spark Plugs we installed have his limousine rolling along as smooth as velvet. And the reception committee wants you to know you're always right with Autolite. And now, back to the second act of The Brush Off, starring Leslie Nielsen and Mary Sinclair. Paula! Paula! Operator, operator. 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 Goodness, you're here. Mm. Who are you? Farley, Ralph Farley. Oh, yeah. Let... That actor friend of Paula's. Well, I can't talk to you now. Listen, I only sir... came back for some papers. You'll have to see me in the morning. Sherman, you've got to phone Paula and get her out of your apartment right away. Two men have gone up there to kill you, and if they find Paula there, they Farley, might... Farley, who's writing your dialogue? If you're auditioning, I'm sorry, I'm not casting tonight. But listen, Sherman, this is important. I'm on the level with you. I overheard them this afternoon. I trailed them to the Mambo. They were in here ten minutes ago. Oh, that's too corny even for a B pigeon. Are you going to get out of here, or do I have to call the police? You call him, huh? I'll call him. And you want to know something? I think those gangsters got a point. Psychiatrist. Hey, don't do that. Close the window, Stevie. You know, this might work out of that. Close the window. All right, I will, I will. Till later. What do you mean, till later? Well, what do you know? Here's the note that Nelson's wife left before she killed herself. Listen to this. I knew it couldn't last forever, but when you brushed me off, I just couldn't take it. So what? So what? With this note and maybe an empty whiskey bottle beside it, why, it looked like Sherman got remorse and just jumped out the window. You can't throw a guy out of the window, Steve. You got a better suggestion? <laughs> Mr. Sherman? Mr. Sherman? Hello? Hello, is this the West Hollywood Police Station? Listen, listen, Sergeant. I want to report a plot to murder Roger Sherman. You listen. don't say. So they're going to bump off Sherman tonight, huh? Only last week was a big jewel robbery. Yeah, I know, I know. That was on a level two. We had six squad cars out all night. 
That costs money. Costs the taxpayers money. Look, why don't you tell Luella, huh? She might believe you. But listen, Sergeant, this is on the level. It... Sergeant? Sergeant! Hello, information. Would you give me the number of Roger Sherman? Roger Sherman. No, no, I don't know his address. It's somewhere in Beverly Hills. S-H-E-R-M-A-N. An unlisted number. Listen, operator, you've got to give me that number. This is an emergency call. I've got to save someone's life. I've already phoned the police. They... Well, I know, but can't you break a rule in this case? They moved in last week. Why? What do they look like? Well, one's tall, and the other always wears a straw hat. Mrs. Hall, you've got to let me in there. I respect the privacy of my tenants. Mrs. Hall, you can watch everything I want to do. I've got to find out something in there. They want to kill someone. You've got to let me in then there. Then it's a matter for the police, Mr. Farley. But they won't even listen to me. I telephoned them already. Operator, give me the police. Emergency, please. Hello, Sergeant Orion speaking. Hello. Hello? I was afraid you'd gone home. Have you about finished up there? Why don't you call today, dear? Yes, I'm coming right home myself. Yeah, okay, Mr. Nelson. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Nelson. I'm sure we'll wait for him. When you lay off that stuff, you had enough. This joint gives me the creep. Yeah, I know it's up too high. Yeah, right. well, I can't help the way I feel, Stevie. I can't help it. Don't tell me it was me that let you in. Oh, thank you very much. Paula. Paula. Paula, are you here? Well, look who's back with us. And I thought you were tucked in for the night. Where's Paula? What do you do with her? I never know, brother. Where is she? Get the window! Ah! Which one is it, lady? The one at the window. Paula, where'd you go? I thought they'd got you. What did he do? What's the charge? Attempted murder. Looks like there's somebody down there. You better go out and take a look. Right. Okay. Do you mind if I stay here? Catch my breath. Sure, sure. Officer. 
You better take him down the back way. The manager doesn't want the rest of the tenants disturbed. Okay. I'll show you. I brought you back. I was working here and I heard a strange click. I, I knew there must be someone in the room that opened the window. So I went for the police. Lucky thing for me, you did. Well, I thought you'd be home by now. We had a message for you. Um, Farley, what are you doing here? I've been trying to tell you all evening, Mr. Sherman. Two men are trying to kill you. Farley, I'm going to give you some free advice. You won't get anywhere in Hollywood by making a pest out of yourself. And one thing more. I'm going to see that you're blacklisted every place in town for what you've but done. But Mr. Sherman, Never he was mind, trying... Paula. I won't be around that long, Mr. Sherman. Well, Sit down, Sherman. Who are you? Hello. Get me the police station. Will you send someone over here right away? I'm going to commit a murder. Who's this talking? This is Frank Nelson. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite.